I've been playing around with a new feature in Fregato that I'm calling Frame Buffer Shaders that I want to show off here today. Now when Fregato draws the screen, it uses the painter's algorithm. It draws the screen in layers, starting with things in the background like the lighthouse and the clouds, and then it draws each water layer finally to these uh, background rocks in the, the immediate background, and then it draws Fregato himself and, and what he's standing on, and finally the foreground layers. So each of these layers is basically like an image that is stamped one on top of the other. Now, the way that frame buffer shaders work is you can specify a layer or a range of layers by their V order and say, I want to draw these layers using some kind of special effect, some OpenGL shader that I'm going to specify. And what Fregato will do is it will draw, it'll render these layers to an off-screen texture. It won't draw them directly to the screen. And then once it's drawn them to this off-screen texture, then it will draw that texture to the screen using the special shader that you specify to provide some special effect. So I'm going to show how this all works. So we go into the edit shaders and and this contains the, the shaders that we have registered. Now at the moment we just have one shader registered. It has a test vertex shader and a, a test fragment shader. Uh, so if you're not too familiar with OpenGL shaders, the way they work is uh, the vertex shader is called for every vertex, and it it calculates the position. Uh, so we see this GL position is is set, and then the fragment shader uh, is called for every. A simplification is that it's called for every pixel, which isn't quite accurate, but but that's a reasonable uh, simplification to make. Uh, and it calculates the what's called the geo frag color, the color to actually draw the pixel in. Now I'm just going to remove this code and and simplify it down to something really basic. Uh, so what we have is we get the the coordinate of the texture, and we look up the the texture by this coordinate, and that's how we get the color, and then we we set that color to be drawn. So uh, so it it just does uh, something really basic, and we have we we uh, merge this into a program, the the test program, which contains our test vertex shader and our test fragment shader. Now what I'm actually going to do is uh, is I'm going to make it so this shader will set the red channel to be fully saturated. So when I apply this shader, you can see that it's actually doing something. You can see that it will make the red shader, the red channel, I'm sorry, get uh, get fully saturated. So I'm going to apply the shader to the screen, and we do that by there's this new uh, new value called level dot frame buffer shaders. Frame buffer shaders is a list of all the frame buffer shaders that that are currently active. Now, when we activate a frame buffer shader, we have to specify its beginning and ending Z order. So that's the the numbers of the layers that we're actually going to draw. And you can actually see the Z orders. Uh, here we have a list of different Z orders, and when I mouse over them, you can see them highlighted. So we can see that that there uh, negative at 1000 to 1000 is actually very inclusive that it's going to include everything on the screen except the background is in a separate z order and as a as a hack for now i've just put the background to z order negative 1 million so the back the whole background is considered one layer from the perspective of uh of these uh frame buffer shaders and it's at um the order of negative a million. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we have to specify the shader info, and that just has the the program name is the test shader. So I specify that. Uh, so when I do this, it should set the red channel to be fully saturated, which we we can see that worked. It it does not do it on the background. If I set the begin z order to negative one million, it'll do it to the background as well. So. To the background as well, but let's let's just do it to the foreground for now, so we can see that that uh, that that applies our, our shader. So everything after the background, all this is being drawn to an off-screen texture, and then it's being drawn from that off-screen texture to the screen using this shader I have specified here. And what's nice is that I can uh, I can change this shader around 
in real time and uh, and it'll actually uh, apply my changes. So let's actually so I could say set the green channel to be fully saturated I could set the blue channel to be fully saturated the red channel like I had uh, or so on I could even you know set two channels to be fully saturated uh, I could set it to pure white I could even could make a silhouette effect so this uh, this is pretty nice we have it uh, we have it all going Frigato is a, a silhouette. Uh, <clears throat> we could set, if we wanted to get a little more sophisticated, we could go grayscale by summing these and there we have everything rendered in, in grayscale. Now let's do something a little bit uh, a little bit more advanced where we'll get rid of this and we will actually apply a distortion to the screen. So one, one big use of shaders is doing things like water effects, doing uh, distortions to how, how things are drawn. So uh, so we see this look up here using this V vector. Uh, is the V0 is the X position and V1 is the Y position on the screen. So we could apply say a sine wave by going v1 equals v1 plus sine of v0 and that will actually do a very big sine wave on the screen we can see here we let's make this a little more tempered so that's smaller let's make it a more frequent sine wave ah there we go so we can see this very clear sine wave going up and down the screen. So we can see that we can uh, we can do some kind of distortion. This uh, um, I think this would be funny if in the forest Frigato swallowed a mushroom and went on an acid trip with uh, with the terrain all being distorted like this. Uh, now one one little <clears throat> one little flaw you can see is we can see that down the bottom of the screen here uh, this these aren't taking proper values and the reason is that of course the way that these uh, these frame buffer shaders work is we're taking the off screen texture we're, we're rendering off screen and then we're rendering that image to the screen using the shader. Now, down the bottom of the screen, this is actually calling for values that are outside of the the area of the texture, and that's getting clamped to the edge of the texture, and thus we get this ugliness here. Uh, now, there's a number of ways we can solve this. I'm considering allowing a provision to actually render an area slightly bigger than the screen, so that things like this will work. Alternatively, you could you could hack up your sine wave code to sort of, as you get closer to the edge of the screen, to, to dampen the value of the, the effect of the sine wave uh, and make it all come out nicely. Um, and, and that's probably acceptable for most cases. Now, uh, th this is also very useful for like water type effects, in which case you probably would want to distort along the x axis instead of the the, the y axis. But I want to show uh, another another important thing is to be able to communicate between the program and the shader. So, for instance, say we wanted this wave. This wave is still as long as Fregato is still. Suppose that we wanted this wave to actually be moving. What we would want is we would want a time value and we would want the game to be able to update the time every frame to show what the time currently is and have the, uh, the shader react to that. So I've already actually included uh, to communicate between the game and the uh, the game engine and the shader you use uniforms. So you set a uniform and that's kind of like a parameter to the shader. And this uniform is called U time, uniform time. And it's a float, and it's going to show us uh, the 